Hello, everyone. My name is Ana Silvia Torres, and I'm an adult services librarian with LA County Library, and I welcome you to Email Like a Pro. Okay, now that that's out of the way, we can get started with today's events. And I do want to mention that this program is supported in whole or in part by the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services under the provisions of the Library Services and Technology Act, administered in California by the State Librarian. And now I welcome our presenter for today, Lawrence Mack. All right, thank you so much for the introduction, Anna Sylvia, and good morning, everyone. We'll get started right after I share my presentation. All right, so good morning. My name is Lawrence, and thank you for joining me for Email Like a Pro, where we'll be looking at a few ways to make your emails even better. Again, if you have any questions during the program, please feel free to post them in the Q&A section and any technical questions or comments in the chat section, and we will get to them um, as soon as possible or during the Q&A at the end of this presentation. For more library content, including news, programs, and resources, visit lacountylibrary.org. We're also on social media with the handle at LA County Library. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and more at LA County Library. Now, let's begin. So this is email like a pro. And as you all well know, email is essential in keeping up with friends, family, and being effective in today's work environment and also personal environment. Um, emails are an essential part of both our personal and our um, professional lives. Uh, they're a pretty worthwhile method of communication. Uh, you know, you guys probably used an email to sign up and receive the Zoom link for this digital program. Uh, they have a couple of points in favor of them. They're fast, almost instantaneous. There's a reason why the regular post is called snail mail. Uh, and that's because email is super fast. Um, email is free to use. Uh, many popular email providers are free to sign up for an account and use, including like Gmail, Microsoft Outlook, uh, Yahoo, and there's a lot more out there, and many of them are free to use. They leave a digital paper trail that can be sorted and searched through relatively quickly and efficiently, something that you can't do as well with a bunch of uh, paper uh, letters. You can notify multiple people at the same time, whether that's family or friends or coworkers. You can send the same email to a bunch of different people, hundreds, maybe even thousands uh, simultaneously. And there are some businesses today that communicate primarily through email. Um, and that makes receiving communications from those businesses or organizations very important. And also emails are instantly accessible uh, in today's world where everybody has a smartphone or a computer or a tablet. Um, they can just pull it out anywhere that there's an internet connection and instantly check on their email inbox. All right, and today uh, we're going to be uh, giving a look at some email examples. So that's going to be a really big part of this program. Um, like there's going to be side by side comparisons of various emails, and we're going to take a look at what makes emails more effective, more efficient. All right, so these two are uh, examples of, of pretty much the same email. The same information is contained, but on the left, the left email, it's a super long email. Uh, it's not as pleasing to read, uh, and it's not really clear what the message is. You know, there's just this big block of text. Um, the, the subject line is pretty long. There's a lot of punctuation. There's a lot going on in this email, and we're not really sure where to begin. Well, obviously from beginning to end, but what if you don't have time? Well, on the right-hand side, it's pretty much the same email. It contains the same information, but it's shorter and also much easier to read. Um, as you can see, uh, there's spacing, which is pretty important. Um, you know, it's addressed to, uh, it's addressed clearly to parents and guardians, whereas on the left, it's just hello. Um, and it's split up into nice, easy to read paragraphs. It's pretty brief. And the subject line is shorter as well. 
So it reduces the amount of confusion, it um, helps with clarity, and it encourages people to respond. Uh, a lot more than if you were confronted with this left email, uh, maybe you don't know what to respond with. You know, you take some time to process it. So why use effective emailing? So effective emailing can help you to save time, can help you to easily retrieve emails, especially if you're searching for particular keywords. It helps you to be clear and concise. Um, not go on long rambling tangents, like a big block of paragraph text, but express your ideas in one to two short paragraphs or sentences. And it helps your email to stand out. Um, if you're looking for a response, uh, it might help uh, the, the person who receives the email uh, to respond in a timely fashion. All right, so first I kind of want to see uh, just from the participants here, and you can type your response in the chat, how confident are you about your communication skills when emailing? You just respond with simple yes or no, um, maybe provide some insight. All right. Okay, uh, so, you know, my communication skills, um, I'm I'm decently confident in my uh, emailing skills, but uh, but uh, I always learn something new, especially with these programs, and and I hope you will too. All right, so here are our objectives. Uh, we're going to learn how to um, write an effective subject line, and we're going to uh, find out how to turn longer emails into shorter emails. We're going to have uh, see how short and long emails work. And uh, we're going to see why long emails aren't as effective for communicating as um, short emails. And also, we're going to learn how to write effective emails to promote a quicker response. Uh, you know, an email that encourages the receiver to respond and reduce confusion. And here are some of our topics. Uh, we're going to take a look at the subject line, short and long emails. Uh, we're going to look at providing options for questions that need to be answered. Uh, and then we're going to finish with some additional resources to help with emails and also our Q&A session. So let's start with a subject line. So a good subject line can get the reader's attention, but also lets them understand what the email is going to be about. It'll be like a trailer for a movie. An effective trailer will give you sort of um, will give you sort of an idea of what to expect uh, when you actually watch the movie. Uh, in addition, there are ways to have your whole message in the subject line only, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, now, so a good subject line will do the following. It'll keep emails brief. It will attract interest. It will express a sense of urgency if a reply is what you're looking for, and it will be scannable. Again, that's keeping uh, the email brief, but you know a person can easily scan it and sort of understand what's going to come in the message. Now, some tips for a good subject line: you want to make it short. Uh, the shorter, the better. It helps with uh, you know reading comprehension and understanding. You want to use some keywords, so you don't want a lot of filler words um, or a lot of punctuation or anything like that that takes away from the core of your message. And also, uh, you can take a look at some prefix modifiers, um, especially like EOM, uh, like end of month, or you can just put urgent or FYI for your information. All of those can help denote what the message is going to be. Um, you can also put some necessary information in, in the subject line. For example, if you're emailing about a certain um, certain event taking place, uh, you can maybe put the name of the event, or you can even put the date or the time so, um, so the receiver can, can know uh, what's coming up. All right, so let's take a look at an ineffective email subject line. All right, so 
for this for this subject line you know uh it's that time of year exclamation 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 fall harvest festivities need volunteers for school bake sale so there's a lot going on in this uh in this subject line you know first there's a greeting and then there's the name of a uh, festival and then there's a request so so it's a lot to take in from the email. So here um, we've got a more effective email subject line, uh, which conveys the same idea, but in a more elegant manner. So here we have volunteer sign up for fall harvest bake sale. So you're clarifying what the event is. See, fall harvest festivities and also school bake sale you're condensing that into fall harvest bake sale. And then you're just uh, adding a volunteer sign up. So you're condensing all of that. You're condensing three different um, phrases or sentences into one concise, one concise subject line. So it's uh, easier to read and it gets the message across. And then you can also consider prefix modifiers like we had, you know, urgent, um, you know, including that, and then the subject line or FYI, and then the subject line. Um, so that further helps to categorize the message. All right, so now let's move on to writing a short email. So a short email is about keeping the message simple and direct. Oh, why? Because there's a, a couple of good reasons. So first, it's easier to read. So if you have a brief, a brief blurb, it's a lot easier to read than let's say War and Peace. All right. Uh, and uh, I, from personal experience, uh, I have encountered emails that that might be comparable to uh, Tolstoy's epic. Um, and uh, a short email. Um, it encourages a quick response rate. Um, you know, they'll usually clock in at about 200 words or less. Um, and some of the things that, that it does is to identify the audience and email clear goals and objectives. You know, why are you sending this email? Uh, what do you want out of this email? Do you want a response? Or do you just want to inform people of something uh, or some other purpose? And also uh, follow proper email etiquette. All right, so here's a short email example. Um, and this is the needs improvement example. Uh, so again, you see that we have um, we have the uncondensed subject line. You know, it's that time of year, fall harvest festivities, need volunteers for school bake sale. And then so here, you know, hello. I hope you're all doing well. How is your summer vacation? It's got a question. And then, you know, I heard recently that school is getting all supplies for the fall harvest. Exciting news, exclamation, exclamation. And then by the way, so, so after all this, um, all this greetings and a bit of small talk, a bit of chit chat. And then by the way, we are opening the volunteer signups for this year's bake sale. If you'd like to participate, please email me ASAP. So that's the request at the bottom there, but all this is sort of in one chunk of text. Uh, and then thank you, uh, Adrian. All right, so that's a short email example. So how can we improve this? Well, applying the, um, applying the tips that uh, from the previous slide, we can turn it into something like this. So first we've got the improved um, uh, subject line. So volunteer sign up for fall harvest bake sale. It's uh, clearer, it's more concise, um, and you can tell at a glance what they want. All right. And then we're following kind of uh, proper email etiquette, which is sort of like writing a formal letter. You're addressing it um, to the recipients, you know, hello, parents and or guardians. And then also you've got an email signature. Um, if this is if this is like a business related email or a professional email, uh, having a signature is good so that people can uh, immediately tell how to get in contact with um, the sender. All right, and then we've got 
uh, paragraphs. So first we've got some information, you know, LA Elementary is getting ready for the fall harvest festivities and it includes a big sale. We are looking for volunteers and it includes uh, important information such as when the bake sale is being held. The bake sale is being held on October 29th and we will send a follow-up email with more details about the event. So that tells, um, so that kind of anticipates uh, questions from the receivers and uh, answers that, you know, they will receive more information about the event soon. And then there's the request, which is separate from the actual um, information. So please let me know if you're interested by the end of this week, Friday, October 4th, first. So it sets a clear deadline and uh, the request is easily viewable in this email. So, uh, you know, people can more easily respond to this specific request uh, rather than try and hunt through this block of text, this chunk of text for what to respond to. All right. So now we're going to move from short emails to longer emails. So shorter emails are ideal um, for most forms of communication, but sometimes a little bit of length is required. Um, sometimes the information being conveyed uh, requires a bit more length. Uh, maybe there are a lot of details. So here are some tips to writing a better long email. All right. So instead of just the big chunk of text, um, which was already sort of uh, maybe a little confusing at first for the recipient. In a shorter email, you don't want a big chunk of text, uh, something that uh, might, <laughs> might deter a lot of uh, readers from reading it if they're short on time. Uh, so you want to use paragraphs and spacing. So you want to break down that long email into readable chunks. Uh, and each paragraph can convey a specific idea. All right. Um, you want to use some bullet points. If you have certain details or lists that you want to send, you want to send them in a clear and concise manner. If you want to, if there are multiple topics on the long email, you might want to use some headings to separate uh, the email into relevant topics. That way, for people who are scanning the email, they can quickly refer to a certain part of the email if they want to reference that or if they want to reply to a certain request. Um, if you have question, if you're sending an email to a bunch of people, and you have questions or requests for specific members of that email. Um, you want to re refer questions and requests to those specific people so that they know to reply and the people who aren't supposed to reply don't reply. It's, uh, I've seen email threads get pretty congested when you send just a question out uh, and there are a lot of recipients and they all reply at the same time. And soon that email thread turns into an unmanageable just chain of, of, of emails. And uh, nobody wants that uh, because it's, it's sort of a hassle to get through. And then also in your emails, you wanna avoid small talk. So you wanna avoid filler words like, yeah, so like, well, you know, just, Things like that, that add unnecessary length to an email. You wanna be, again, clear and concise. All right, so let's take a look at a long email example. So this example, again, uh, you'll see it's from the not ideal version of the email. Uh, again, it's got all of this. It's got the super long subject line, it's got the hello, um, and then just thank you at the end. And then there's just this big chunk of text. All right. Again, you know, there's like, are you guys excited about fall harvest festivities? I know I am. And then just, and it's really hard to see what this person wants, what Adriana wants. Because uh, again, here, please find out if you would be willing to volunteer for the bake sale and respond 
by, to Paul or me by Friday, October 8th. If you're interested, please reply to us with their full name, student's full name, blah, blah, blah. But this is kind of hidden in the middle of this big chunk of text. It's pretty hard for, the, um, for a reader who just opened the email and just has maybe a brief, brief moment of time to scan it to see what this email needs. So thusly, they're probably going to wait until maybe they get home or maybe they're on a break or something to actually take the time to read this email and decide, you know, if they need to reply or not. And some people might just forget entirely. So it's best to improve the long email example by using the tips that we discussed before. So here you've got volunteer sign up for fall harvest bake sale. And then it's got the email etiquette, you're addressing them, and you're breaking this down into chunks. So again, there's a couple of paragraphs and there's spacing, which makes this email more appealing to read and easier to discern what the point is. So first there's some exposition, it's kind of introducing the event. Um, and then also we are looking for, so, Here's a list of what they're looking for. It's pretty clear and concise with the bullet points. They're looking for 10 bake sale adult volunteers. And then also they're looking for these amounts of cookies per person. Um, and then um, it's got some additional information and then a request. And please let me know if you have any questions or concerns. So all in all, this example is, is clear and easier to read than this big mass of text right here. Right. Now, uh, if you want a response from your recipients, um, it might be good to have options to allow for a quick response. So emails are not as useful for having really long discussions as like I mentioned earlier, multiple replies and threads can quickly turn it into a cascading and confusing chain that people will have to scroll up or down uh, to find the actual original message and then read through all those replies to get a gist of what's happening. It can quickly you know, spiral out of control. Open-ended questions can lead to pretty vague responses or even multiple answers. So if you are asking questions over email, it's best to, number one, you want to phrase the question clearly. Uh, a clearer question can let the recipient know how to respond or what to respond with. And the second option is to provide some options or alternative answers so that the recipient doesn't have to think about it that much. And this works, uh, especially if, um, if those options or alternative answers uh, are you know, based on dates or numbers or just a simple yes or no. All right, so here we go. We have an ineffective email for a quick response, all right? So just hello. For the volunteers during the bake sale, what time should we meet to set up before the event? The bake sale starts at 5 p.m. and will take an hour. So there's not too much context here. What time should we meet to set up before the event? Question, question, question. So a lot of the question marks here uh, makes it seem like uh, this organizer, Adriana, doesn't really know um, and doesn't really have a plan. So it doesn't really inspire confidence. All you have is the bake sale starts at five and takes an hour. So you know it runs from five to six, but is there any setup time? Is like what time does school let out? Um, there's a lot of details that are missing and it's very vague and unclear. So whoever's receiving this message can conceivably respond with, I can be there in the morning. I can be there at 4.55. I can be there five minutes before. Um, it can be all over the place. Now, if we incorporate some of, um, some of the tips from the earlier slide into this more effective email for a quick response. You can see, all right, so first, the uh, subject line is changed, schedule meeting time for fall harvest bake sale. So 
Uh, so, so you're letting them know that you want to schedule a meeting time. And then you're phrasing the question in a more clearer manner. So for those volunteering, what time works well for a meeting before the start of the sale? It begins at five and will take an hour. Here are the following options. Please respond by end of day. So you're laying out the options and you're also giving the recipients a deadline to respond. It's a lot easier um, than this example here. What time should we meet to set up before the event? But you're not letting them know a deadline. And if you don't let them know the deadline, well, maybe they'll respond like five minutes before the bake sale starts and say, you know, I can be there in two minutes. Um, it's not ideal for um, somebody who's coordinating an event uh, if the responses just come in willy-nilly. So here, you're giving them a deadline. Please respond by end of day. And you're giving them options. So A, 3.30, 3.45, or 4. So you're basically letting them know uh, sort of the time frame for them to uh, come in. And, uh, and then they can just choose from the options listed below. Uh, and it will be much better for the organizer who has to plan out when, when things come together. All right, and here's an example of a follow-up response using just the subject line. So uh, once, once this organizer gets all the responses, they can just, um, they can just respond using the subject line, you know, volunteers for fall harvest bake sale meet at 3.30. So then the recipients can immediately see the subject line and that's it. Uh, that's all they need to read. They know that it's 3.30. So they'll hopefully come at 3.30 with their cookies. All right, so that's, um, that's the main meat and bones of this program. Uh, so we learned how to write a good subject line. We learned how to separate long emails to make it more digestible. And for any questions asked during the email, uh, we learned how to provide some options to make, um, to make uh, receiving answers more efficient. Now, here are some other tips um, to help improve your own emailing skills. So... So you want to review your previous emails. Um, you know, for if you go to your sent folder, you can just take a look at your emails, how they're structured, what their format is, and then you can kind of see maybe where you need to apply some of the things that you learned uh, during this program. Uh, another way is to plan and draft your email before sending it out. So it's just like planning. Uh, planning to write a letter, you, you think about the components you need, and then you can just draft the email and just fill in you know, all the parts before you send it out. You wanna check for spelling and grammatical errors. So in a lot of uh, email clients today, like Gmail or Outlook, um, they do have the, uh, they do uh, do spell check and grammatical errors, but it's best to go through it by yourself with a careful eye and see if there's anything that you might've missed. Another way is to also read out your emails. So again, if you read it out loud, it's, um, it's a different process uh, from just uh, reading it uh, mentally, and it might help you pick up on some, uh, on some unclear passages and, uh, and, and, and hopefully help make your email more clear and concise. And then again, practice makes perfect. Uh, so just remember um, to keep practicing um, on the emails uh, and apply any new things that you've learned with them. So we do have a lot of library resources, including books, eBooks, and e-audiobooks um, on uh, emailing and also on email etiquette as well. Um, so again, uh, here's some library resources. Again, Emily Post Manners in a Digital World, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People in the Digital Age, and Kill Reply All, A Modern Guide to Online Etiquette.
Um, so these resources uh, and more are available uh, on our uh, learning platforms. And there's also online courses as well. So for LinkedIn Learning, there's a lot of different uh, beginner, intermediate, and advanced uh, courses that deal with emails and also business etiquette collaboration in the digital workplace. So here are the um, course titles along with their um, instructors and their levels. And also Universal Class also has a couple of courses on business etiquette, writing effective emails and effective communication. So you can find all of those and more um, at lacountylibrary.org and you can access all of those with your free uh, LA County Library card. If you have questions about, um, about the topics in this event or just about anything in particular, any kind of information need, you're more than welcome to speak to a librarian. Uh, we're available on phone, text, email, instant librarian on the days and times listed here. And you can find all the methods to contact us at lacountylibrary.org slash contact us. Conversely, you can always visit an LA County Library location and go to the reference desk and a librarian will be happy to help you with your information needs. Right. And again, this event was supported in whole or in part by the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services under the provisions of the Library Services Technology Act, administered in California by the State Library. And that's our presentation for today. Thank you for uh, thank you for experiencing email like a pro. Uh, and now it's time for the Q and A. Thank you. Thanks, Lawrence. Great job. Um, so I just want to remind everyone, if you have any questions for Lawrence, please put those in the Q&A and we'll try to get through as many as possible. Um, but let's start with our first question here. So applying numbered bullets to an email often gets weird. Um, so Valerie would like to know um, any suggestions. So um, they uh, usually write in Word, then copy and paste into an email. So any better suggestions for that? Mm. Um, yeah, so... I do know what you're talking about. Um, sometimes uh, email text editors, they don't really support too many fancy functions. Um, however, writing it in Word, and copy and pasting might also um, have some unsupported functions like you know uh, fancy numbered bullets or anything. They might not translate over as effectively. Um, well, I would uh, recommend just using a simpler um, bullet system, or you can just put dashes as well. Uh, it's a simpler system, and there shouldn't be any formatting errors, and it's it's easier to read for both um, both yourself and the recipient. Great. And then, what is the difference between CC and BCC? You can let us know. All right. So, um, so regular CC. Uh, all the recipients can see who is um, CC'd in the email, all right? But BCC, so that's basically a blind CC, um, only you can see who's in that list. So none of the recipients can see who is in the BCC, all right? And that's, that's the only difference. Um, so if you want to add somebody... Um, if you want to add a private recipient, then BCC is the way to go. Okay, and we have a couple people who would like to know what EOM stands for. Um, see, I believe this stands for end of month, but um, let, let me see if there are any other. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure either. In terms of email, I, I oh. don't think I'm aware of that. All right. Um, so, so it actually stands for um, end of message. Um, so, um, so, 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 um, pretty much, it's like the final communication in in the email. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that either. So, uh, let's see. Any more questions? So, this is more of a, I think, a basic question. But if you can maybe just explain how you would get to your email folder, would that be, I think, inbox or, um, yeah, I don't know if you can just sum it up or. Um, you know, maybe you can point to a resource, but yeah, we have that question. 
Okay, so how do you get to your email folder? Um, so usually whenever you sign up for an email service, let's say you're signing up for a Gmail account or you're signing up for a Yahoo account, um, after you complete the sign-in, um, so that usually consists of you uh, putting in your first name, last name, um, you wanna create an email address name. So that's usually like your username. After you put all that in, um, then they'll just, uh, they'll just take you to the email homepage. And that includes your email inbox and your different folders. To um, access your other folders, it's usually on your left-hand side uh, in your email interface. And then where it says inbox, um, below it will be a list of the other folders. Um, so usually there will be like a junk folder, a trash folder, and then um, whatever other folders there are, you can create uh, your own folders. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, this question, um, it's about BCC again. Um, so it looks like sometimes Outlook has acted up um, and then, so let me see if I get this correct, why sometimes Outlook acted up. So they can all, it appears like when they send BCC, it looks like other people were able to see BCC. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, um, if you've heard of that, if any ways to avoid that from happening. Mm. Um, well, to do that, uh, to avoid that, I'd recommend sending a test email first. Um, so if you have multiple email accounts, you can just send one to your other account and BCC and put some stuff in the BCC and see if that's visible. Um, I've not heard of that happening, nor have I experienced it, but test it to make sure it works. And also, um, you know, just test to make sure that all the emails are entered into the BCC um, field, because usually CC and BCC, they're right next to each other. So sometimes um, might accidentally uh, paste the emails into the wrong field. Yeah, good point, good suggestion. And this is uh, another question. If you sent a long string of people, how do you safely remove your visibility from a string? So I think it maybe means like a lot of, like a chain email maybe, um, just a, an email where there are a lot of people. Like in terms of visibility, um, I'm not entirely sure what the visibility means. Like if you're sending, if you're sending an email, the recipients will be able to see who sent it. So they'll be able to see the sender. Uh, that's usually not avoidable. However, if you're sending, say, if you're replying to a bunch of people and there's a long chain of uh, email, there's usually an option to select, you know, include the chain, include the thread or not include the thread. And if that's what you're talking about, um, you know, there's usually an option to just reply with just your portion and not include the thread, or you can just manually go and delete um, all of the thread that's included. Uh, you know, if you just highlight it and just backspace all the, the portions you don't want, that usually uh, gets rid of the, any included threads as well. Okay. All right, so we are coming up um, on short on our question. So I just wanted to remind everyone, we still have um, a few minutes left if you have any more questions. And uh, while we wait for those, I will post some links in the chat. Um, so here is one for, um, if you wanna sign up for future digital, digital literacy classes, um, we have those as well. And then we have our digital literacy playlist on our YouTube channel if you're interested in going back and watching some of our presentations. And okay, so those are in the chat. And then um, are there online library courses for free to learn more? So well, um, um, Lawrence mentioned some of the courses that we offer LinkedIn Learning through through our, our platforms that we're subscribed to. So you can go and take some classes on email as well as other topics. Let me see if we have any more questions. Um, so we do have just some suggestions. A lot of 
folks seem like they want to more email classes, but they want to learn more about the basics, um, how to compose an email, how to start one, um, the different buttons. And yeah, we have a few people that that noted that. So what I will do is I will post our post event survey. Um, well, you can let us know exactly what you're looking for in these classes. And, um, you know, we try to to cater these to you all. So let us know what you're looking for and what you need. And, um, you know, we'll we'll uh, see if we can put something together. Um, um, I, I want to add that uh, we do offer an introductory email course. Um, and uh, I will uh, see about scheduling that for um, in the near future. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah, we have. Yeah, we have about a few people that that really would like that. So that's great. Yeah. Um, and then for the library courses. Um, it, um, so we will be sending out an email um, after the class and with that one will include the slides um, in this presentation. So if you um, if you want the names of those courses, uh, don't worry, you'll be getting um, all the slides and you'll be able to you know peruse those courses at your leisure. That's great. And we do have one more question. Um, so if I'm replying, how can I BCC for myself? Will the sender be aware of my BCC? Oh, okay. Um, so yes, you can definitely put your own email into the BCC um, and, and you will receive um, a copy of that email. And no, uh, the sender will not be uh, aware of you BCCing yourself. Great. Okay, and it looks like that is just about it. I'll see if there's any more questions, um, just some comments, which we've already talked about, people interested in, in different kinds of, of email classes, the courses. Uh, yes, I believe we answered if the course, if the library offers courses, and yes, they are free. Um, and you'll get all that information, as Lauren said in the email. And um, okay, so with that, um, we don't have any more questions, and we uh, are at the end of our program. Um, so I want to thank you all for joining us for today's program. We were going to go ahead and uh, say goodbye now. Uh, Lawrence, anything to add? No, that's all. Thank you so much for attending and hope to see you all at the next digital literacy program. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Have a good rest of your day.